Hello, everybody. It's your host, Sam. And I just wanted to announce something quickly before we get into this episode. But youth camp registration is finally open. So from July 12th to July 16th are the dates for youth camp. And the price will be $190 in the month of May. And each month, the price will increase by $15. So if you do your math, in the month of June, it'll be $205. And in the month of July, the price will be $220. So hurry up, drop into the description. The link is there. Get registered as soon as possible. And without further ado, enjoy this episode. Thank you. Hello, everybody. (laughs) Hello, everybody. And welcome back to the... I six eight podcast. podcast. What's up, David? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing good, man. <laughs> so, why are you laughing, dude? Didn't even ask how you- <laughs> hey, man. David, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for inviting me again. I am. Um, I mean, I was thinking, like, you know what? You haven't been on here in a while, and I can't do this without my friend. So I'm here inviting you again, and I'm excited. S- sweetest thing you ever said. <laughs> No, dude. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Anyways, I wanted to get you on because I wanted to talk about a topic that I think is really important to our generation, especially young people. Um, and that is is materialism, mm-hmm. career goals, popularity, popularity. Is that all bad? And because, <clears throat> you know, one thing I noticed is that in the youth, we like to do this thing where we compare ourselves to our it's natural yeah it's natural like we think like oh they're doing better than us um this person has this this and that and i you know you you kind of feel empty but i think you know it's it's important for us to address this topic um i don't know what do you think i think it's very important um i mean here we live in the u we live in the u.s and the fact is, compared to a lot of other Christians in other parts of the world, mm-hmm. we are living in the, kind of like a moment of prosperity. Yeah. And I think it's very important to address this because there's a lot of Christians that still haven't figured out like their purpose or the peace inside, the kind of like, not the empty part inside of them. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they're still living for certain things in this life. And it's not, maybe it's, I don't know anything about our church or maybe it's other churches or other Christians in other areas or just the fact that, you know, here to be a Christian to some degrees, you know, meant that you're more successful, more, more better worth ethic and all those different things. But there is a deeper meaning that a lot of Christians either know or ignore or just are not informed about. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, just to kind of set the stage up for what we're going to be talking about. I kind of want to define some stuff. Um, <clears throat> so mater- materialism, um, the way I would define it is that it's when one person looks to material possessions, to physical things um, for comfort and kind of put their focus on that instead of um, focusing on spiritual needs, spiritual values, um, especially in the Bible <clears throat> You know, we have we have a, a, a name for this. It's idolatry, uh, you know, where we're kind of worshiping these things instead of focusing on God, relying on Christ. And there's also other things that are rather than materials. And there's there's career goals that we like to idol, idolatrize uh, and popularity. All these things are things that we we want. Um, but in, I think it's more important that we kind of shift our focus towards Christ. We shift our, our thinking and everything that we rely on on Christ instead of putting our focus on these things. Um, I think you have uh, some Bible verses. Maybe you could kind of read them off real quick uh, regarding this and, and from the, a biblical perspective. Yeah, I have, a, I have a Bible verse that kind of shines light on materialism and what kind of what the Bible says on it. Mm-hmm. Um, 1 John uh, chapter 2, verse 16 to 17 for everything that is in the world, the desire for fleshly gratification, the desire for possessions, and the worldly arrogance is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world and its desires are fading away. But the person who do- does God's word will remains forever. Yeah. You know, the Bible clearly says, you know, 
whatever we have here, whatever, you know, we kind of store up here, Mm -hmm. whatever we're trying to achieve here, maybe, you know, physical material stuff, um, is going to go away. It's not going to last. Um, kind of like, you know, when Jesus says, you know, when you drink from the world, you will still be thirsty, but if you drink from him, you will never be thirsty. Mm -hmm. You know, it's eternity. Yeah. Something that he gives something that comes from him it's not something the world offers that is limited you know you run the race to get a crown that lasts forever not a crown that's temporary yeah definitely uh, i think <clears throat> especially you know looking at that verse it's saying um a lot of the times like <laughs> we don't understand that this void that we're trying to fill like Christ is 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 the living water, and I know there's like the story of the, of the woman at the well, where Christ comes to to the woman. He's like, um, uh, do you want? Th- so basically, the story is is that he comes to the water. Do you want the living water that I give? If you drink of the water that I give you, you won't thirst anymore. If you drink of this water, you'll keep on thirsting. But if mm-hmm. you drink of the water that I give you, you won't thirst anymore. And she's asking her, him, uh, Christ. Um, where can I get this water? And he's saying, I am that water. I'm that life that that you could get this from. And I, I do feel like that's like where now in America, or well, specifically Western yeah. you know, environment, you know, we're doing a lot better here. Prosperity, dominance, all those kind of things. And I think that really falls into this category because I feel, mm-hmm. I mean, I can't state it for everybody, but from my experience with Christians, especially younger Christians who, you know, who maybe are not that mature yet and spiritually, Mm -hmm. they, they don't have that satisfaction that is like said Mm -hmm. or that is promised from the Bible or they don't have that full fulfillment. You could tell from the side because they're constantly trying to achieve something, trying to gain attention, success, status. They're always seeking for something. They have never have a fulfillment of some sort. Yeah. You know, even to my own life, you know, I have my own struggles. And I think the biggest reason is that it's because kind of you're they're missing the they're missing Christ. They're missing who Christ is, what what he is for them. Mm-hmm. And I think that is a really big problem in our society. You know, for a lot of Christians, yeah. they it's like we we say, you know, Christ is everything, you know, he's the living water that mm-hmm. you never go thirsty again. But it's it's just another saying, you know. Yeah. Not a lot of people actually practice it or live it out. Honestly, yeah, and I think a big like a big deal of that, <clears throat> big reason of that is because like in America, growing up here, materialism is is like highly exalted. You know what I'm saying? Like like there's the American dream where people like like Slavic people are coming here like from like like anywhere or in Ukrainians and they're like yo. I'm going to come here, start start a construction business and make a ton of money and get married, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, here in the West, um, materialism is such a big thing. Um, gaining uh, a better and bigger career is a big thing. Um, kind of one-upping your neighbor basically is, is a big thing here in, in the United States and I think that culture kind of transfers over to the church church sometimes we have this like you know um I don't want to like diss on any particular gospel but with the prosperity gospel we see the people are <clears throat> kind of gearing their attention towards these possessions these material things but then you know, you go over to another country, a third world country, where they don't have that luxury. They're just like they're struggling to get by. Uh, we look at China. There's an underground church that um, is doesn't have you know many possessions. They're they're mistreated really poorly. Um, even in in um, the Middle East as well, we see that as well. So we see that people are being mistreated there as well. Uh, they don't have that many things there, and but the one thing that keeps them going is, is that hope in, 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 in Jesus, that hope that, you know, there's, there's a better, um, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. So I think that's, that's really important to, um, to know and to, to realize that a lot of these material things, like we, we, we get this from like this Western culture that we have right now. Here's yeah. a question for you though. Um, 
So maybe look in our own society in a different uh, environment or some other place. Um, here we are more comfortable. We have more. And in other areas, they have less. They're oppressed. They are Christians are not popular at all. Mm-hmm. It's not a good thing to be a Christian in other areas. Yeah. And you see, like we hear from, you know, mission, mission stories and and other people that, you know, they're they're growing. Their faith is increasing. You know, more people are, are mm-hmm. starting to believe. But here, you know, we have the big Christian name. We're doing all good. The church is not necessarily growing, but it's still big, you know. Yeah. So based on that, what do you think is, where's the balance? Where can a Christian kind of maybe whether it's with wealth, whether it's with possessions, whether it's with, you know, friends, relationship goals in life, where is the balance that a Christian should be at to the point where he's not, he's not having too little, but at the same time, he's not, he's not depending on materialistic Mm -hmm. on other stuff. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, the, the way I think about it is that let's just say like you wake up one morning and you're like, you know what? Um, don't pray. Just like you hop on Instagram real quick. Like, okay, this, this is great. You know? And you just like keep on going with your day and you're like, um, and you don't, you don't stop to think about, you know, you don't pray. You don't go to God. You're not asking him for guidance, blah, blah, blah. And you're kind of just focusing on yourself. And then the, and what you're thinking about more is how um, how's work going to go today? Am I going to make more money? Blah, blah, blah. Um, oh, this person has more than me. Blah, blah, blah. And when these things, these thoughts and, 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 your, and your work, your career start taking over your life to the point where Christ is kind of put off to the side. You're like, you know, what? I don't need I don't need Christ. Right now. I don't need God right now. All I need to focus on is is these things right here. Um, well, then you're missing the point of life. You know, um, kind of like in Solomon, in Ecclesiastes, so, uh, Solomon is saying like everything is vanity, like um, all that stuff, all the stuff that you strive for is it's gonna become dust, um, uh, both physically and you know, th- hypothetically, <laughs> theoretically speaking. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's kind of the way I look at it. I don't know. What do you have to say? Because that's just like. Because when those thoughts start taking over, that's like how you know like there's an issue with that. You know, here, here's one thing that I've always had this thought in my mind. I've, I've never actually expressed it. Was when a preacher says something about, for example, let's say, you know, da 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 da, car, car, and then he at the end of it all, he's like, oh, but I did not mean that you can't have a car like that. Yeah. You know, he's it. He's not saying it wrong, but it almost seems like. He's kind of like, you know, guys, you know, no, it's okay to still have that little desire for car. Of course, yeah. And it's, you know, at one point it's not bad, but there has, I feel like God is calling us to a moment where not exactly go live as a poor person, but live as a person who is not dependent on anything. Yeah, literally. And, but the issue of that is people are dependent on so many things that they think are net. Uh, that they think is a necess- necessity in their life, but mm-hmm. it isn't. Yeah. You know, whether, you know, even phone, if your job requires it, you know, you, you, you have to contact, of, you need a contact of people, you know, yeah, good for you. But if you're struggling with certain sins, go get a flip phone, you know? Yeah. <laughs> there is obviously such a, a bad view on this mm-hmm. that people can't see what is pulling them down. Yeah. Kind of like what's pulling them down. Yeah. I feel like a person would ha- has to step back, look at his life and be like, you know what? God is a center. What's going to help me live my daily life and get closer to God? Mm-hmm. And what is just going to pull me off to the side? Yeah. And I feel like, like you said, everything will vanish at one point. Everything, you know, we try to store up, it will be gone. But I feel like if a person really wants to have peace, a person really wants God to be the center of his life, to see what was promised in the Bible in his life. Like, you know, Solomon, at the, at the end, uh, I think his last words were something like, you know, you know, following God's will mm-hmm. is all that man were created for. Mm-hmm. Um, every little secret thing, whether good or bad, will be, you know, exposed yeah. in front of God. In the end of the day, everything you do, do it for the best because 
God will see and God will judge for every step that you take. Yeah. And everything you build up, he's going to judge for that too. Everything yeah. you build up for yourself, everything you think you need, but you don't need. Because for some reason in America you need it, but other people in other countries don't need it. You know? Yeah. You know, and I, I think at the end of the day, what what I'm trying to say is, you know, if people look at you from the side mm -hmm. and they obviously see that you have or you do things that are not n necessary, mm -hmm. then something's wrong with kind of like where you're going in life. Yeah, I would say, yeah, uh, for sure. Um, also, I, I want to mention that, like, at the same time, these things like career goals and um, material things are not necessarily bad. Like, we don't, we're not trying to say that these are, like, complete, like, sin. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's okay to, like, I'm, it's okay for you to like a certain car and then, you know, try to save up money to get that car. Um, as long as it doesn't control you, obviously, but, um, things, material things can be useful. You know, a lot of, a lot of material things that we have in, in, in the church are useful. Like, you know, there's sound stuff. Well, I'm just thinking like, like material things are not bad necessarily. It's what your heart is like, where, where your heart is placed, you know, that can, and if that's controlling you, then that, that's something you have to look at. Same thing with career goals. Like having a good career is important. You know, Paul says, you got to work. You got to make money. If you, if you can't, if you're a man and you can't provide for your own household, you know, then you're worse than an unbeliever. <laughs> <laughs> so having like good career goals and having money is like, is important. And well, even in that, you see security, it's, it's, it's important, but to what degree do you depend on your own abilities to be secure in life compared mm -hmm. to how secure and how much trust you have in, you know, in Jesus? Yeah, of course. So that's, that's one thing. That's a big answer. portion of it. I'm curious, like, what for you growing up, um, where have you seen um, this idea of materialism and finding, trying to find career goals or, or popularity um, to fill, like, a void in, in a person? Like, how have you noticed that growing up? Maybe it was, like, in the church or at school? Because I have a lot of examples. Well, the funny thing is, in church, it's exactly like in the world, just a little bit different. In the world, you know, young people at school, you know, what you dress is what you are. Simple shoes, clothes, you know, brands, um, friends, simple. In church, it's more how good your family is doing, mm -hmm. um, what car you drive. And, you know, I've heard, like, I remember talking to some people that went to a church from, and then the conversation leads into, yeah, you know, the guys are hanging out in the parking lot seeing whose car was, you know, stronger, make the, you know, bigger sound with their engine and stuff like that. They're going to rev it the loudest. Yeah. And, you know, it's 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 funny in Cuba, like, you really see <laughs> yeah, that. that's pretty They cool. have nothing else from the church besides that. Like, that's, like, what their memory yeah. consists of. And that's why even the church in this prosperity and dominance kind of time within the last couple hundred years, it's so dependent on that kind of structure of things. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I I just feel like maybe my. I know. I know. Dave Ramsey's like, yo. Some people they be putting down like major payments just to like get a nice car to show off when they pull up to church. But it's like you're like sixty thousand dollars in debt for like a like a Ford Raptor or something. <laughs> I don't even know how much they cost. Like, it's probably seventy thousand. Probably. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, it's Continue. fine. Continue. Um. Yeah, my grandpa will probably be the biggest example of um of a kind of man in my life that lived free from materialism. Mm -hmm. Um I mean obviously now he's old and I actually pray for him. He's he's really sick right now of covid, so that's a big thing. We shall. But Keep it's him in the prayers. Yeah, I came over to his house. He's like, "Hey, even though no, his like fever is like, I don't know, so high." Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty funny, but I think he was a really good example because, you know, he came here with nothing, with just a family. Um, the only thing he would tell me about his life is how at one point he decided to go home and kind of like read the Bible every single day instead of hang out with friends. Mm. And that it gave him like life and uh, kind of like a goal and like a pathway in life. And mm. just the family structure of mine is doing really well. I'm, you know, we have like my second cousins, like a, a family of like, 15 and then my third cousin's like a family of 50 mm -hmm. and all of them are kind of like 
still in the church structured around my grandpa because mm-hmm. his kind of like mentality was you know christ jesus bible kind of like on you know even though he comes from our traditional church but he kind of like he doesn't have any hope in any other things he had some kind of engineering job that he got fired because he was a christian back in uh, ukraine mm-hmm. but he he doesn't even, he said he never well based on my grandma's words he never really cared about that yeah you see that there is there are two types of people. There's a person that is dependent on Christ, and there's a person that is dependent on everything else revol- revolving around Christ. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's where the America um, kind of, you know, builds the churches. Like, you know, Christ in the middle, but just a small figurehead. And then around it, they put plants and flowers, and they, it looks pretty, and it's awesome. Mm-hmm. But, you know, in the middle, it's like rotten, or it's not... There's just it's just a figurehead, yeah. or Christ becomes everywhere in part of their life, yeah. and I feel like a lot of us actually push away that spiritual person. We kind of a lot of us like, I mean, I feel like these days, everybody doesn't like spiritual people, especially young people. Like I remember you guys came from uh, Bible camp, and Tim was like the spiritual one, and everybody's like, whoa, 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 whoa. like you're spiritual, you're good, stay over here. You know, we got we got our own squad. And the reason I'm saying that is because it's not popular to be free from materialistic stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, Christian life, you know, even though having comfort, having, you know, money, having this uh, freedom, you know, in this in America is good. But at the same time, if you really want to live as a Christian, there are things you restrict. There are things you have to throw away. There are things you have to reject. There are there are certain limitations you have to make for yourself. And, and you know, as we look, if you really want to be free from this, it's like it's like an addiction to sin. It's like an addiction to materialistic mm-hmm. stuff. You gotta really, you know, look at Christ and be like, you know, I want to live, you know, Christ-like life and yeah. not a life like this. Yeah. And you know, at the end of the, end, end of the age, once you pass away. God is going to be like, you know, good and faithful servant. You know, you live for me. You don't live for the worldly stuff. Yeah, definitely. I know um, for me growing up, I like I didn't my family didn't always have a lot of money. And so I would come to school and I'm just like, yo, how does this person have like the new iPhone already? Like, what the heck? It I thought it came out like yesterday. And because I went to school in Medina. Yeah, Medina. It's a cool name. And yeah, in Bellevue. So if you know Bellevue, if you're from Washington and you know Medina, then you know that they're they have a lot of rich kids. So these kids had like new um, clothing, shorts, like all like there's the cool the cool thing was like elite shorts and like these Nike um, sportswear, mm-hmm. and they had like cool shoes and they also had like the new phone every single time and I literally just had like an iPhone four that I had for like the longest time. And I'm just like, yo, this sucks. I want all this stuff so bad. And like, I remember my shoes were like ripped and I, I would, I think I like super glued them. like oh. a couple of my pairs. <laughs> like if you're, if you're Slavic and your parents and you're like a first generation, um, uh, born here in America, then, you know, like sometimes you just got to super glue your shoes. If your if your parents didn't have that much wealth, but basically I'd look at that and be like, yo, I, I want to be like those people. And also I wasn't as cool as them. I would say like I got along along with everyone, but I wanted to be part of the cool people or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like there's always that want from people who are kind of less in the hierarchy of yeah. school. So, um, the more I, I started growing up and then I transitioned over to, um, uh, running start in my sophomore year or sorry, junior year, I realized that like some of these things, like they don't really matter. Like once you get out of school, I, I know a lot of our, our viewers are young and they need to realize like, <laughs> you know, like when you're in that phase of life where you're in high school and you're kind of looking at everyone, like it, it's going to pass away you know and don't like focus too much on that in, in, in this time in particular like you'll get to it yeah also i didn't have a car until i was 18 <laughs> my own car and then i and then when i did get a car it had a busted transmission and like 
you kind of look at that and you're like, man, I want, I want these material things. I want to be as cool as these people. I want to have, you know, blah, 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 blah. But you got to realize like when, like there will be, there will come a time where you're just going to be relaxed and you're not going to be as concerned about those things. I don't know if you had that growing up. Um, no, I mean, um, even when I, when I felt like I, you know, I became a full on Christian, really decided to live a life for God. Even till that moment, I didn't feel fully yeah. fulfilled. Like even if, even if I had a car, even if, you know, I got money to spend, yeah. Yeah. didn't change anything. I think, uh, it actually put a lot more extra stress and a lot of wasted time on my life because I was concerned about things I should have just like, you know what, God, I'm in a good spa. I'm satisfied with what I have. I'm going to live my life like this. And God would have been blessing me that way. Everything would have been better. But I guess, you know, I do feel like I wasted a lot of time and a lot of thoughts and stress, anxiety instead of putting on Christ. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what young people need, especially young people. And I think that's like the point of our conversation today is a lot of people still don't know what it means to put their full on attention, satisfaction, you know, desires into God's hand. You're not, yeah, you're, you can't go through life um, and not put your burden on, on, on Jesus. Like, you don't, don't carry that burden. I don't know, I don't know why you, um, that burden isn't going to be fulfilled through having a nice car or through having money. Um, right now, I have, I have a good car. I have money, but I'm, sometimes I don't, f- like, if I'm not f- seeking Christ, if I'm not seeking God, Sometimes I feel like I have nothing, like there's nothing going for me. Mm-hmm. Cause I have like this void and that void is going to stay there unless, but unless you cast your burdens on God, you know, and the Bible says cast your anxieties on him because he cares for you, which is true. You know, um, there's no reason to carry that burden. Like I think people need to hear that, you know, they need to understand that they don't have to do this alone, you know? That's why we have we have mm-hmm. Christ. That's why He died for us, you know, so that we could cast our anxieties on Him on the cross. And I think that's a beautiful message for sure. I feel like we generalize a lot of main stuff like cars, house, mm-hmm. career, but it's like in every little area in your life, whether it's your telephone, how you spend your time, who you have as your friends, what you do at church, how you come into church, how you leave church, how you come into school, how you come into work, how you prioritize your plans, your goals. You know, it's. Really, is it about getting closer to Christ, learning how to love Him, or is it about fulfilling your kind of security, your attention, whatever it is inside that you're looking for? Yeah, for sure. And, yeah, let's just continue on the path to Christ, because that is the right path. Yeah, for sure. I would say that kind of concludes our conversation. But, yeah, some good thoughts. David, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate you. And uh, everybody who's watching, leave a comment down below if there's anything you want us to talk about. Um, Leave a like, share this video, and thank you. Peace.